Good evening. Welcome to the Manistee City Council meeting. Tonight is Tuesday, November 16th. Uh, please rise for the pledge. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please take the roll. Councilmember Bachman. Here. Mayor Beaton. Here. Councilmember Lundberg. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Sullivan. Here. Councilmember Shemansky. Here. Councilmember Grabowski. Here. Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Here. City Manager. Here. City Attorney. Here. Planning and Zoning Director. Here. Police Chief. Here. City Engineer. Here. I think that's everybody. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda. Or I have it. Add the Economic Development Council update. Under new business. Under new business. Do we have a second? I'll second. Public hearings. We need to. Oh, I'm we sorry. need we to need vote. Take a vote. Right? Okay. Councilmember Bachman. Yes. Mayor Beaton. Here. Councilmember Lundberg. Yes. Yes. I'm Mayor Pro Tem Sullivan. Yes. Councilmember Schmansky. Yes. Councilmember Grabowski. Yes. Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. It's a long agenda, and I'm a little they, nervous. Um, public hearings, we have two. Uh, first, we are going to hear the public hearing for the countywide parks and recreational rec recreation master plan. Networks Northwest has been working with local governments in Manistee County to update the five-year recreational master plans. This cohesive planning effort helps to ensure that the county continues to be a quality place for people to live, visit, work, and play. The state of Michigan DNR requires that municipalities have a five-year recreational plan to be eligible for various plans for various funding opportunities. A 30-day public review, which concluded at the end of October, followed by this public hearing to gather community input, are requirements of the process to approve a five-year parks and recreational master plan. No action is anticipated at the at the conclusion of the public hearing. However, this matter is on the agenda for consideration later on this meeting. Do I have any public that would like to come forward and speak about the recreational plan? Mayor, uh, Tim O'Connor, 330 Fourth Avenue, Manistee, Michigan. Also the current chair of the Manistee Parks Commission. In reading over the, um, the proposal, I would just like to add one thing I, I would like to see added to that. In the very beginning, it talks about how Manistee um, is a beauty and natural wonder that abounds in the regions, forests, lakes, and rivers that remain a constant factor. It will always make Manistee a, pe a special place to live and visit. I think we're missing something. Um, we would like to add that the ancestors of the Little River Band of Ottawa Indians were the original inhabitants. Um, of these great lands. I think they're a part of the Manistee and for some reason they weren't incorporated into that proposal. So somehow we'd like to have that added. I'm not sure if that's a Manistee Parks and Recs or committee that needs to do that or we can get that from the City Council. I think it's a great idea. Thank you for this suggestion. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to come forward? Seeing none, um, we will go on to public hearing for establishing a commercial rehabilitation district. <coughs> Section 207.843 of the Michigan Commercial Rehabilitation Act, Act 210 of, 20, of 2005, states that a public hearing must be held prior to adopting a resolution establishing a commercial rehabilitation district. The proposed district would be a three acre site to include the Lakeshore Motel property as well as retention area to the south. 
No action is anticipated at the conclusion of the public hearing. However, this matter is on the agenda for consideration later in this meeting. Do I have any citizens who would like to come forward? Please step forward and state your name and address. Uh, citizens are allowed an opportunity to speak for five minutes. Thank you for your time. My name is Thomas Dame, PO Box 641 Manistee. The analysis of the application for approving a commercial rehabilitation district is deficient, illegal, and should not be approved for the following reasons. As far as I could ascertain, public notice of tonight's hearing on this application for approving a commercial rehabil rehabilitation district was not provided to the public a minimum of 10 days pursuant to Michigan Commercial Rehabilitation Act, section 20C.843.3-3. Hence, the hearing does not comply with the requirements of the Commercial Rehabilitation Act. Number two, this hotel does not qualify as a qualified facility as defined in Michigan Commercial Rehabil Rehabilitation Act, section 207.842.2-8. Section the act states a qualified facility also includes a hotel or motel that has an additional meeting or convention space that is attached to a convention and trade center that is over 250,000 square feet in size, and this is located in a county with a population of more than 1,100,000 people. Clearly, this motel property does not qualify as a qualified facility. Number three, the purpose of a commercial rehabilitation district is to rehabilitate property. The proposed rehabilitation of this property does not comport with the requirements of the Michigan Commercial Rehabilitation Act, section 207.842. Section 2-K. The act clearly states rehabilitation means changes to a qualified facility, just talked about it, that are required to restore or modify the property together what's all, with all appurtenances to an economically efficient condition. Rehabilitation includes major renovation and modification, the improvements of floor loads, correction of deficient or excessive height, excessive height, new or improved fixed building equipment, including heating, ventilation, lighting, reducing multi, reducing multi-story facilities to one or two stories, improved structural support, including foundations, improved roof structure and cover, floor replacement, improved wall placement, and improved exterior and interior appearance of building, other physical changes required to restore or change the property to an economically efficient condition. Clearly, the proposed raising of the existing motel and replacing it with a much larger five to six story structure does not comport with either the requirements of Commercial Rehabilitation Act nor its intent. I understand that this purpose of this hearing is for the purpose of approving or denying an application for approving a commercial rehabilitation directed. However, as many citizens have voiced their objections to this project, I would like to add mine within my time for the record. Sir, Pro Sir, five minutes is up. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Sir, can you please write your name and address on the list, please? I will give it to the group. Is there anybody else who would like to come forward? Okay. I don't see anybody who wants to come forward on public hearings, so I think that uh, um, is closed. Uh, we're moving on to, I know this seems weird, but we're moving on to a citizen comments on agenda related <coughs> items. So do I have any citizens who want to comment on the agenda related up? I don't see anybody. All right, moving on to the cons consent agenda. All agenda items marked with an asterisk are on the consent agenda and considered by the city manager to be routine matters. Prior to approval of the consent agenda, any member of council may have an item from the consent agenda removed and taken up during the regular portion of the meeting. Consent agenda items include approval of minutes, payroll, invoices, notification regarding next work session. 
At this time, council could take action to approve the consent agenda as presented. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Heather, could you take the roll call? Councilmember Bachman. Yes. Mayor Beaton. Yes. Councilmember Lundberg. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Sullivan. Yes. Councilmember Schmansky. Yes. Councilmember Grabowski. Yes. Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Moving on do we, do we, uh, to new business. Uh, consideration of a resolution to approve the 2022. Mayor, we have the Economic oh, Development sorry. Council update first. I beg your pardon. Um, Economic Development Council update. Uh, Dennis P. McCarthy, Barney Castle Oil and Gas. Good evening. Thanks for uh, welcoming us to the agenda today. Uh, my name is Dennis McCarthy. I'm uh, affiliated with Lorney Castle Oil and Propane here in Manistee County. And I'm also fortunate enough to be a member of the uh, Manistee County Chamber Board. Uh, and a few years ago, we worked with you folks on an economic, economic development program in Manistee County. Um, you were the leaders uh, to help support that, that model. Um, that model includes um, partnership in this community between uh, the city, the county, the DDA, uh, the IDC, West Shore Community College, uh, and private enterprise in the county. So thank you for your support and everything you've done to support economic, economic development in the county and specifically in the city. Uh, the partnership in, this, in the state is unique, I think, in, in the county. Stacy um, from our chamber and Jeff Dons are going to talk a little more about that. But if you go to other communities in northern Michigan and in Michigan in general, um, we, we have a unique model between private business, local government, and, um, and education um, matters as well. Uh, we want to acknowledge there's more work to do. We appreciate all that you've done as a city council, and we're here uh, to be engaged with you, and, and uh, our team is here to talk to you tonight about, about what, we're, what we have going on. Uh, I, want, I do want to point out that private enterprise has stepped up in the community and funded about $56,000 with the funding toward economic development on an annual basis in, in the county. Um, those funders uh, are, are Munson Healthcare. James Barker, the president of the hospital, is here tonight. Uh, another funder is Little River Holdings. Uh, Tom St. Dennis is here, uh, their legal counsel from Little River, Little River Holdings. Mark Marietta is a funder. Uh, Jim Reichel is here, the vice president of operations at Mark Marietta. Uh, other funders include uh, Filer Credit Union, Blarney Castle Oil and Propane, Lake Star Farms, Consumers Energy, PCA, Morton Salt, Iron Fist Distillery, and the Manistee County CVB. So we really have a great partnership between all levels of government. Uh, and private business in the community, and uh, we want to thank you for your support, and I'll turn it over to Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Good evening. I don't really don't have a heck of a lot to add to what Dennis had to say. It's the cooperation is, is what I think is phenomenal that separates this group from probably ones in the past, and uh, the county and city definitely are helping pave that way as well, and organizing it along with the help of the chamber. And it's just, it's been a good cooperation. It's been a great cooperation. We've had a lot of projects and we've had two extremely unique years going through the pandemic, trying to get through some of these things as well. And in the process of that, I think considering what we've, we've lived through to where we are today with the things that we have teed up, hopefully to have some great new uh, enterprises in the county and in the community. And I can tell you that from, from my perspective, we've put in extremely amount of effort into the uh, city proper if you will because as the city goes as I say people don't really care where the boundaries are it's the greater Manistee Lake area and as as that greater Manistee Lake area goes so goes the county so with that I enjoy working together with everybody in this process and trying to move the community forward and with that I'm going to turn it back over to Stacy so Hello, um, Stacey Bightwork, CEO of the Chamber of Commerce, and I echo everything Dennis and um, Jeff Dont said tonight. I just want to let you all know your partnership with the Chamber and the community is huge because we are being watched by the state of Michigan. We hosted um, Quentin Messer, who is the CEO of the MEDC, came to our community. We were able to take him around, show him our downtown, the opportunities and some of the challenges we've had. We also hosted the Lieutenant Governor this week. And that's a big deal for us. So the state is watching us and everything we're doing, and it's our time to shine. So I think you all as leaders can help support that 
and what you've done and the decisions you make going forward in this community. We are one of the kind of the last um, untapped resources on the lakeshore that I really think that we have so many opportunities here for investment. There's developers that Mark and I in um, our EDC board talk to daily and they're looking at this but they're watching the decisions made by this council and our county and kind of what direction this community is headed. So I think to attract future investment, to attract startup businesses that are here in our community, we have an opportunity as all partners to collaborate moving forward. We have a lot of momentum going on right now. Our chamber is one of the lead chambers in the state right now. We were asked to serve um, on a panel with Traverse City and Midland as leaders in economic development. So that's huge. So again, everyone is watching the momentum we have. So I just wanna thank all of you for your support going forward and what we can do for our community in the future. So thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Okay, all right, thank you. That was actually item A under um, section eight. So we'll have to change the numbering system. Mm -hmm. for, you know. Okay, moving on now to consideration of a resolution to approve the 2022-2026 Manistee County Wide Park and Recreational Recreation Master Plan. Networks Northwest has been working with local governments in Manistee County to update our five-year recreational master plan. The, the sections that are specific to the city of Manistee include pages A through 42 through A through 46 of Appendix A and F26 through F29 of Appendix F. The state of Michigan DNR requires that municipalities have a current five-year recreation plan to be eligible for various funding opportunities. At this time, council could take action to adopt the City of Manistee Park and Recreation Master Plan Resolution. I'll make that motion. Four. Any discussion? I would huh? like to make sure that we add the sentence that was recommended uh, by the chairman of the Parks Commission. The ancestors of Little River Port of Ottawa Indians were the original inhabitants of these great lands. I think that's an excellent segue into the entire plan. So we might have to modify our motion here to include that. So how do we go about doing that at this time? Yeah, I would say approve the plan with the, with the following is the stated changes. I'd make that motion. Okay. So we don't have to resend the first motion. Are you uh, amending the previous motion? If that's what yes. you're doing, then yes. It, um, if uh, Councilmember uh, Shemansky makes a motion to amend the previous motion, get support, you can vote on that and then vote on the original motion after that. Okay. So I make the motion that we amend the motion to include um, the language on our uh, indigenous people, uh, the ancestral home of the Little River Band of Ottawa Indians. Uh, they were the original inhabitants of these great lands. A second. Any discussion? I'd just like to thank uh, uh, Network Northwest for you know spearheading this. This is, a, you know, again, if you've looked at this document, this isn't something that just came together today or yesterday. Uh, this is probably the work of years. Uh, and, and it shows, I mean, it's, it is really is a quality document that, that is gonna be something that we can use to, to enhance our parks and recreation. And as most people know, park and recreation is part of our, our uh, economic development. So uh, it all goes hand in hand. So I think it's been a great job. Heather, I think we're ready for you now. Okay, so we are voting right now on the motion to amend. Yes. Okay. Councilmember Bachman. Yes. Mayor Beaton. Yes. 
Council Member Lundberg. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Sullivan. Yes. Council Member Shemansky. Yes. Council Member Grabowski. Yes. Council Member Martin Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. And now we are voting on the amended motion. Council Member Bachman. Yes. Mayor Beaton. Yes. Council Member Lundberg. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Sullivan. Yes. Council Member Shemansky. Yes. Council Member Grabowski. Yes. Council Member Martin Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Consideration of a resolution establishing a commercial rehabil rehabilitation district. Pursuant to Public Act 200, or 210 of 2005, the City of Manistee has the authority <coughs> to establish commercial rehabilitation districts within the City of Manistee at the request of a commercial business enterprise. Hotel Ventures Manistee LLC has filed a written re request with the clerk of the City of Manistee requesting the establishment of the Commercial Rehabil Rehabilitation District for an area in the vicinity of 101 Lakeshore Drive located in the City of Manistee. At this time, Council could take action to adopt the resolution establishing a Commercial Rehabilitation District. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? I have a, I have a question. Um, Mr. Gamble, we talked about this. We talked about the footprint of the hotel. I see now in the public hearing it added the retention basin, and now in this other piece it says in the vicinity of the hotel. Have we expanded this whole thing now? So one of, the, why? one of the requirements is a three-acre district where it has to include a qualified food establishment. So we, we chose to do a three-acre district, which is encompasses that retention area, but the only property that it really affects is that um, Lakeshore Motel property. Does this mean that we've committed the retention basin to turn it over to the hotel for development? Is that what we're doing here? No, it doesn't. Just it's creating, that's part of the district, but it has no other effect other than it's a qualifying um, area of amount of land that's needed to create the district. Anybody else? Um, Mr. Saylor, you know, it was brought up earlier during uh, public comment that there was some question about uh, uh, this qualifying as uh, a rehabilitation district, in your opinion, does it qualify? It, it does. There, there are um, parts of the qualified facility as described by the speaker that would involve a hotel and various sizes. There are other uh, um, descriptions or other provisions of that same uh, statute uh, that this particular property would fit. Um, I did also confirm with the clerk that the publication or the public notice of that uh, hearing was at least 10 days in advance, which is a requirement. It is correct that's a requirement, but that was complied with as well. So yes, um, uh, under, and we've, we've discussed this and discussed this and discussed this, uh, under the interpretation of that act, we believe that this would qualify. Thank you. Anybody else? I would just like to make a comment on commercial rehabilitation districts in general. I did a little bit of homework on this just to satisfy myself, not knowing how many there are out there or how, how unique this is. In 2020, um, the state of Michigan received 39 applications uh, for commercial rehabilitation uh, districts basically and um, they were able to uh, process I think one of them was declined and um, most of them went all the rest of them all went through there were a few that had different amounts of years on them um, but over 30 of them went through with the 10 year we're not voting on that tonight as far as this goes we're just establishing the district but it was good information to have, and it came from areas all over the state of Michigan with much, with similar type, some of them very small populations. The city of Iron Mountain probably doesn't have a very high population. <laughs> um, there are several there. So um, they are all over the state. Uh, it's, it's not, it's obviously not a surprise. It seems like there's some in most of the, I won't say most of the counties, but a, a goodly portion of them. 
Uh, so I thought that was a little bit reassuring to read that. So is there anybody else who has anything? Okay, I think we're ready to take a vote. Councilmember Bachman. Yes. Councilmember Lundberg. Yes. Councilmember Shemansky. Yes. Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Yes. Mayor Beaton. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Sullivan. Yes. Councilmember Grabowski. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. All right. <coughs> Consideration of authorization for the purchase of 14 self contained breathing apparatus. App oh, I'm sorry. Mayor, I'd like to ask that this yes. item be tabled. Um, I was speaking with uh, Chief Cameron. I think there's some procurement items I want to work through with him. So I'd ask if council would um, consider tabling this for a future date. I'll need a, I guess I'll need a motion. I'll make table. a motion. I'll second the motion to table. Are you tabling that to a specific meeting then? Yeah, we're actually tabling it until uh, the fire chief can be at the meeting to answer questions and look at the um, the bidding process. Mm -hmm. the, the, if if you, if council would allow the motion to reflect that it's actually postponing, we're not tabling. When you're tabling, you're tabling typically to. The, a specific meeting, and so in this case, we're just postponing it until we can address the concerns of of, of the mayor and the rest of council. So we had a future. <coughs> yeah. So if, if the motion could reflect that, if there's no objection, then we can proceed. Make the motion to postpone. I'll second. <coughs> Councilmember Bachman. Yes. Mayor Beaton. Yes. Councilmember Lundberg. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Sullivan. Yes. Councilmember Shemansky. Yes. Councilmember Grabowski. Yes. Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Consideration of Ordinance <coughs> 2119 to amend Chapter 863 Food Vendors of the City of Manistee, Michigan Codified Ordinances. The Downtown Development Authority requested an amendment to Chapter 863 Food Vendor Ordinance to allow for short-term food truck opportunities in the downtown district. As an ordinance, two separate readings are required. If this ordinance is introduced at this time, it could be adopted at the next regular meeting. At this time, Council could take action to introduce Ordinance 21-19, amending Chapter 863 Food Vendors. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second. Any discussion? I think it's a good idea. <laughs> yep. I agree. <coughs> Heather, could you please stay? Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Yes. Councilmember Grabowski. Yes. Councilmember Shemansky. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Sullivan. Yes. Councilmember Lundberg. Yes. Mayor Beaton. Yes. Councilmember Bachman. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Notices, communications, and announcements. A report from the Peg Commission and Econo Economic Development. A regular part of each council meeting is a report from a cooperating agency, organization, or department. Is Barry Lynn here? At this time, Mr. Barry Lynn will report on the activities of the Peg Commission and respond to any questions the council may have regarding their activities. There he is, he's right in the front. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, I don't have anything formal tonight. This is just a verbal report, um, partly because the Peg Commission hasn't been doing much. Um, we recently just had two meetings, but those were actually the first meetings we had in a year um, due to pandemic reasons. And then the size of us, our commission right now, we're a five-member commission and we only have three members. So if we don't have everybody available, we don't have a quorum. So it's been challenging over the course of the last year to actually even meet. Um, 
But having said that, um, the last two months we have had meetings and I look forward to um, trying to basically recover from um, uh, where we are as a commission. And I'm gonna kind of give a little bit of a background um, for, for what PEG is, how we kind of exist, why we've come about. Um, so the PEG Commission's primary historic role um, basically comes out of the franchise agreement that the city has with what is now Charter Communications, um, our cable provider. Um, and under that franchise agreement, there are provisions for local public access television on the cable airwaves. And 25 years ago or so, that was the foundation of what PEG um, was created. Since that time, we've evolved. Um, we now really represent the city as well as Filer Township and Manistee Township. They both contribute financially to the operations of the commission. Um, so we kind of really represent Charter's footprint in the area. But the other thing more recently, and I would say you know, in the last five to 10 years, is really the change in technology that is changing how the world um, treats public access and what that means to exist in the world we live in. Um, one of the funding sources for PEG is um, in the city of Manistee. Manistee has opted to impose or to allow Charter to impose a 15 cent per month fee for every Charter cable subscriber. And those funds flow into um, the PEG Commission. But those funds, which used to be about $6,000 a year, this year I'm anticipating about 4,500, that trend is continuing and I think is actually um, speeding up that fewer and fewer people are using traditional cable as their means of television. Um, streaming, various online sources are really coming to the forefront and replacing that. So that's changing. <clears throat> how PEG needs to exist and be relevant. Um, because that's not where people go anymore to get inf access to information like the recording of this meeting that's being recorded <clears throat> and will later this week be available. About five years ago, um, what we started doing is basically mirroring everything that we had always done through Charter Cable onto our website and the YouTube platform. Um, and actually, that's actually in many ways a much better platform for most people who are comfortable accessing content that way because you can go forward, you can go back, you can replay things, you can't hear, you can hear something, you can rewind it. You don't get those opportunities when just watching um, something on cable television. Um, so, what I'm finding is that is where most of the people in the community that care um, about the types of content that PEG is providing, which are mostly the um, meetings of the council and the commissions of the city, um, the Filer Township board meetings, the Manistee Township board meetings, and then under the franchise agreement, a public access organization, any, any member of the community who wants to submit something, we basically have um, a responsibility to provide them a platform for that content to get um, distributed as long as it fits within community guidelines. Um, so we're seeing that um, YouTube and the web are the primary platforms that people are now accessing the content. And in some ways that's good because we can actually then start measuring um, how many people are watching. Whereas on um, traditional cable, we have we would never had any ideas to how many people other than anecdotally when people come up to you on the street and say, hey, I saw such and such. Um, as it relates to the city programs that um, we are broadcasting, by far and away the most watched are the DDA board meetings. Um, anywhere from 100 to 200 views per meeting of that content. 
Um, these meetings, city council uh, meetings and work sessions, would fall in second place. And then anything that has interest of the community. Um, recent planning commission meetings have sparked some interest for um, obvious reasons. Um, and what I'm really finding enjoyable now is with the newfound push for all city commissions to get their meetings recorded and getting that content there, I now watched a tree commission meeting, which is the first time I've ever had an opportunity to do that before. Um, so there's a lot of good content out there. Um, so that's a little bit about where we were, what we've been doing, how we're really kind of evolving. A little bit on the technology side is um, we are hosted physically inside the Manistee Middle High School. So we're kind of in a closet down in the basement where our actual equipment is that connects into the charter network. Um, and that is actually where we have our monthly um, commission meetings is over at the high school in their conference room. A um, couple other things I just wanted to kind of go over is, I've already mentioned some of this, but the two townships that are our, um, our partners as well, Filer and Manistee, they provide us financial support along with in the city, lim the city limits, it's the charter subscribers that are contributing through that monthly fee. Um, so that basically forms our revenue side. And realistically, for the last year plus, our expenses have been minimal um, because I'm volunteering my time. So I'm, I serve as the um, chair of the commission, but I'm also the acting director. So I've been volunteering my time to do the weekly and daily work that's necessary to keep things online. Um, and because I'm volunteering that, we haven't really had many expenses. So we're really, we've been building up uh, a fund balance that we anticipate once we get to a fully staffed commission um, to start using for promotion and marketing and advertising because the biggest issue is that most people in the community don't even know we exist because on Charter, we're buried down at one channels 198 and 199, which you gotta scroll a lot to even figure out that we're there. Um, and on YouTube or our website, if you don't know it exists, you don't know to go look, looking for it. A um, couple other things is we started a strategic planning process probably about four years ago and just before the pandemic hit that was kind of wrapping up and the board basically had action items to go and basically start engaging with different organizations within the community to kind of gather some input and really kind of set then direction. That's all been placed on hold throughout the pandemic. But one of the areas where that had started, um, and I think has shown fruit, is um, just before the pandemic hit, I was having monthly meetings with a news advocate. Because as an organization, they're financially strapped. They don't have the resources that news organizations used to have to send reporters to every meeting that might happen in the area, and they, really can benefit from the fact that if the content gets timely posted up onto YouTube, that they don't have to physically leave the office. They can basically review that video content and write their story. Or if they miss something, that a meeting that they were at, they can go back and kind of replay it and get that. So, and they've been doing us a favor by, in articles that they produce that you know, rely on our content. They usually give us um, some credit on that, so that's kind of an informal form of advertising that gets our name out there. So those are what those are the things we've been doing. Um, we just need really a fully staffed commission. I've been tapping all of my friends, and I haven't been able to get anyone convinced yet that they want to join this little venture. So, any questions? I have a couple questions. A long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> when I first moved up here. That was about 20 years ago. There was a, Channel 11 was the real estate channel. Mm -hmm. And it's, and everybody who, who came up here, stayed at a hotel, was able to watch real estate ads for 
listings. Um, I don't know if it's time to resurrect that in a more modern approach, um, if that would be helpful. And I don't know if the one real. <laughs> I don't know. If real <laughs> community wanted to have a discussion about that, I'd be more than happy to brainstorm with them on, on you know, ideas along those lines. Um, so yeah. Um, I think anything, you know, obviously we should be using the airspace if we have it, right? Yep. So yep. it seems to me it would be prudent to put all kinds of things on there, mm -hmm. you know, community development, what's going on. Right. And um, I mentioned it earlier on, on Charter, we're on 188 and, or 198 and 199. We actually have two channels. Right now, we're just showing the same content on each, but, you know, we could double triple the amount of content because we, we have space for it to be broadcast. We just don't have the content right now. And, and anybody who could take a decent video could, you know, with their, yep. even their Doesn't cell phone, submit Cell phones, I mean, our, the camera quality on cell phones are amazing what these days. What about schools involved in getting the high school kids to show their stuff on, on the video? You um, empty channel. Yep, I've, I've had those conversations and so far the, the school system has not wanted to, for a variety of reasons, to commit to doing anything along those lines, but. Okay, any other council members have something for Barry? Did, uh, is there any possibility of the PEG taking up um, a broader view with the internet and with uh, satellite television? Or is it just too hard to get there? It's really too hard to get there um, without significant um, dollars to, to do that. Um, Anybody else? Who, who, who does upload the, the meetings? It's not you, it's somebody else, somebody else uploads them? Um, Right now, I'm getting them from Heather. Um, okay, and then you upload them? Yes. Okay. So she delivers them to me, and then I basically do the stuff on the back end to get them shown. Shown, okay. Is it just the meetings that you have on those channels? Um, I mean, again, anything that's provided to us. So we have a couple local churches that have their services available. Um, we have a local gentleman, um, he's actually one of the fellow commissioners, uh, Mike Tillotson, that um, attends lots of community events and records them and submits them. So, um, you know, there is other content, but the majority is generally public meetings. Well, I was just wondering if, like, if you could get with, like, the chamber or, you know, like, have stuff on there, like, about Sleigh Bell and... Like Fourth of July weekend and stuff that's yep. going on. If that can Mike be. usually produces things around those um, okay. where th there has been other content, um, and generally, you know, coming up on Sleigh Bell, I'll pull out something from a couple years ago so it's running while people are here so they can kind of get a feeling as to what the parade's going to look like um, you know, before it happens. Okay. I've been to a lot of the parades over the summer, probably because my husband's been this is in the Scottville Palm Band. But I always run into Mike. He's always filming. Yep. So he's, he likes Although to he's play. slowing down. He's been saying that he may have to stop doing that. Well, thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you. Very informative. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think now is Mr. Mark Miller's turn to come forward and report on the activities of economic development and respond to any questions this council may have regarding their activities. Mayor, council members, <clears throat> thank you very much for the opportunity to speak tonight uh, in front of you and to provide this report. I also want to say thank you uh, for your support of the uh, Hampton Inn project this evening with the creation of the rehabilitation district. Uh, that's very helpful. And, uh, and we are very supportive of that project because of the projected annual spend or spending income that we've talked about uh, being, having a $17.2 million impact in the community uh, once that is uh, up and open. Uh, so thank you for that and for your continued support. Um, just to reiterate very quickly and briefly, 
that uh, the chamber's role uh, uh, is as the economic development organization for the county. Our role is to make business easier uh, for, uh, for new investment, uh, for new development, for existing businesses, for expanding businesses, um, and to retain those businesses and, and jobs that we have in our county. Uh, things have been going very well uh, with, uh, with the work, and I can report that in the last three to four months, we've had an increase in our work and uh, cooperation with the development partners for the Gateway Project. Uh, so that's been something in the last quarter that has increased and has been very positive. Um, we also, uh, as part of that, have been maintaining our twice a month status calls uh, to keep things moving. Um, and uh, we'll continue to uh, have conversations with the development partners uh, moving forward with assistance on their key milestones. We also, as Stacy Bytwork have said, have had some very high level contacts in the last several weeks uh, that highlight uh, the work that we're doing and the potential for state assistance uh, to have the MEDC CEO and the Lieutenant Governor here to talk about our economic development program, the projects and the potential for growth and for jobs has been, uh, has been tremendous. Um, part of the work that we've done in the last uh, several months has been to, uh, in, uh, to launch our economic development portion of the Chamber website. Uh, we also have been working on communications, information packets for developers and for VIPs like the Lieutenant Governor. Uh, you have an example of that uh, on your desk, uh, but we have been uh, working on those marketing tools as a team and uh, it's been very positively received and we've been using those materials uh, from uh, for developers as well as for new entrepreneurs. So we had uh, conversations even today where we referred them to the resources on the website. Uh, you can find that at manisteechamber.com uh, to peruse around, uh, but we have segments there for entrepreneurs, for developers, and, uh, and also information on the communities uh, and information. So all the things that you would see in an economic development program to promote the area and to recruit business and investment uh, is on that website. Um, our business and retention, uh, business retention expansive visits have been uh, going very well. We've had 19 in the last four months. Uh, we're hearing a number of things uh, from different sectors. Uh, we have business expansion in the county for, uh, for manufacturing jobs. Uh, we've heard that a couple times uh, and been offering support uh, for, those, uh, for those manufacturers. We also have uh, helped on the other end of the spectrum, brand new startups uh, that uh, you know some businesses do not survive their first year. So we've been focusing on some of the new businesses, especially in downtown Manistee, uh, to help them with, uh, with their information there. Uh, so that is going very well and we will continue to uh, work through that. Uh, you have been receiving monthly and, uh, and the quarterly report as well, it's also in the packet. Um, uh, information that we can provide to you so that you're aware of what those visits look like and what some of the issues are that are coming up. Uh, we also uh, have been working on the Redevelopment Ready Community Certification Sites, working with MEDC. We've had several meetings and conversations with building owners uh, and MEDC uh, to try to get uh, through the scope of work that is needed and to, to help promote those sites as as part of this community's uh, priority sites. You all helped pick those sites out uh, last February, and we're continuing to see a lot of, uh, a lot of movement and interest in those sites. Uh, so we're working with MEDC on that, and, uh, and uh, I, will, I, can, I can also tell you that we've met with the Wagner Center um, to, uh, to look at one of that, uh, that potential uh, for as an RRC site for uh, a request for proposal. So MEDC has stated they can help and assist with putting out those 13 acres for a senior development as, uh, as a site that uh, uh, they would help promote and help put together. And so they can help us with that heavy lift. Uh, and so we're, we're hoping to advance that in the, in the coming months. Uh, so that uh, is, in short, what we have. Uh, we continue to stay in uh, communication with you on our progress, uh, and I'll um, pause now for any questions you might have. 
Mark, if they did the project over by the Wagner Center, would that be middle income apartments or what? Remains to be seen, uh, Council Member. The, uh, the RFP uh, could spell out what kind of uh, development would be attracted to that. And so that can be spelled out and, and that will be done in partnership with the Wagner Center. So uh, I know that uh, Sarah Howard has, uh, has, some, uh, has some ideas on where to go and we need to continue to flesh those out and help deliver what product the, that her and her board would like to see there. I know I thought that was a good idea when they were planning those apartments. Yeah. I was looking to work in, move in. <laughs> be a great idea over there. Yeah. Well, um, might be a few years to get that rolling through, to get an RFP and to get a development, but uh, uh, so um, we'll, we'll see what we can do about that and, and, uh, and we'll let the board and, and Sarah kind of guide that, uh, guide that discussion. Can you share anything about the Hotel Northern? Sure. So, um, and I know that Zach's in, in the room from the planning, uh, planning department. Um, we are in, uh, both of us, Zach and I both, are in contact with the developer. Uh, the building has closed uh, and they're working towards uh, uh, the site plan, which they were working with, with Zach on. And uh, they are uh, kind of piecing together what their next steps might be. And so we're in this early discussion with them on a, on a project that will include a mixed use, commercial and residential development. Uh, but beyond that, I think that's probably where I need to leave it on the details. But it's very exciting. Uh, this developer came in with resources and with uh, prior experience and knowledge on, on how to do a, a historic re rehabilitation like that project. Uh, so uh, anticipating some really great things and some uh, exciting, uh, exciting uh, product at the end of it. But uh, we're... As a county, as a community, we're attracting that type of investor. Uh, we're attracting that sort of, uh, of resourced developer, and that's a really positive step for us. So we'd like to see more like that individual and, and his company, and, and uh, hopefully there'll be more, more in the future. Are there anything to be done at the old Kennedy School? Every time I drive through parking, I like friends looking at that place and wonder if it's ever going to get turned over or any process happening there. Um, that is a really good question and a very interesting parcel. I think that um, uh, there is a strong potential uh, with the uh, location, uh, with this access to water and sewer, a hookup through the township, that um, uh, you could find a, a developer for that. It's important to note that the county land bank might be a, a strong tool for the redevelopment of that to provide the incentives to take that pro project and pro property on. And, uh, and we're looking in, uh, to, to that as a tool for the future. Um, I think that um, those types of parcels where you have serious blight, large project, large building, uh, will be something that will require an incentive uh, for uh, rehabilitation or for redevelopment. So, um, a good thought on the plan. Yes. Okay. And it's uh, and it's something to look for in the future um, as we keep working and supporting this this work we're doing. I have a couple questions. Um, what's going on with three fourteen seven? That's a great question. Um, back in July, uh, we. Um, well, let me, let me just cut to the quick and give you a short answer. We don't see a lot moving on that project with the developer. Um, and uh, city staff and myself have all uh, tried to assist uh, the developer with that project. Uh, but we haven't seen any city, uh, any plans for development that have gone into uh, to Zach and County, um, County Planning Department or City Zoning uh, Administrator. Um, Nothing is moving on that. Does he not? Is there not a time frame on that? Is it just like open ended? I can't remember what his plans were when he brought it up. And I know it switched a few times on what he wanted to do, but I'm just wondering if there's like a time frame that you can we can rescind that. Yeah. So uh, city council uh, has the ability to um, to rescind that after a period of time if there's no uh, if there's no progress. 
And so we've had discussions uh, as recently as this morning um, about what to do with that particular issue. Um, and um, I'll let Bill kind of, Bill has kind of the next step. So if you. Yeah, I think just establishing a deadline, things like that. I think the assessor talked about this next year. It'll still, it still has to have that um, incentive in, but then the next, the next year can be in question. And it's about the city having a policy for things like this. If we don't see movement, being able to have a policy to say we have a policy right now. I think I think we're working on one, and I think we can set up deadlines. And that's that's what we're talking about this morning. Is kind of making sure we're cons we're consistent, and we um, I don't think we've had one quite like this where it's not moving. So okay. I think it's important to to yeah, we're going to be looking at this one closely and setting up deadlines. Yeah, I think we need to give them a deadline. Like if you can't get it together, like it needs to be resolved and may I just add one more thing council member that um, back in July uh, and it's on this report here in very vague terms but um, the chamber pulled together city staff and the developer to try to uh, uh, encourage him to focus on uh, what was needed and we had a, a very good meeting uh, the city assessor delivered a very stern message that you needed to make progress um, and so, uh, but, but here we are now, it's November, uh, and uh, you know, I think that um, you know, another message needs to be delivered. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I just have one more question about the, um, under your bottom line, like the contacts, like what exactly is that? Like who does that pertain to? Okay. Um, the, the contacts are going to be any developer, entrepreneur, um, any uh, business owner that has come in with something um, serious, beyond, you know, a business retention question or, or need for assistance. Uh, so it's kind of everything uh, <coughs> segregated out by, by our geographic area because you want to know where we're working with in terms of downtown versus the city, and the county also needs to know those numbers. So we're lumping all of those in uh, for a metric on the number of times that we have contact with an entrepreneur, a business owner, or a developer. Okay. Well, Mark, I want to thank you for your report. Thank you. Could, could I ask one question? I was just reading this first part here. Can you explain to me when it says that you were a certified redevelopment ready community? What qualifies us? What, what are the criteria for be, being a certified mm -hmm. redevelopment? So this is a program under the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. Mm -hmm. And in order to be certified, uh, you have to uh, follow certain zoning practices and, uh, and be able to uh, demonstrate uh, that you can work with, work with developers in certain areas. Uh, the certification took place, I believe, uh, uh, several, more than more than several years ago, um, uh, believe uh, five years ago, but I'm not entirely sure of that. Uh, but we have been uh, working on recertifying uh, uh, every year with reporting uh, that the county planning department does, along with the chamber uh, and the city. And uh, we also keep the priority sites updated and go back to city council and boards and commissions to help select those as required under the program. So we're in good standing at the moment. Um, and we, we'll be able to, as a result of being in that program, uh, be able to get marketing and assistance for those priority sites so they can be redeveloped. We also, uh, just with, uh, with, within the last week and a half, submitted uh, a grant to MEDC called Match on Main, uh, which the only way that we were able to qualify for that uh, grant was, application uh, was because we are an RRC city. So there are benefits to that program, um, and it signals to developers that we're a community that can be worked with and have the right zoning uh, ordinances in order to uh, enable development to happen. So in other words, somebody who might want to develop somewhere would look at this and say, oh, Manistee's ready to do this? Perfect. Yep. I got one more question. I might be completely wrong on this. Um, I feel like I read somewhere that there was other towns that had 
uh, like a downtown district like we do, and if there was a vacant storefronts that there, the store owners could be fined for, because I remember you talking about people not wanting to lease out their buildings and it being, them being vacant. Is that some? That is a, a, uh, an option okay. uh, for the city council. Other communities do uh, use more of a stick approach to vacant uh, downtown properties. Uh, so that could be explored. Uh, I know that our DDA point person, Christina Baika, has, has looked into that. Um, and um, I believe we, we might have had some other conversations there, but uh, that is something the city council could do um, to help uh, move uh, some of those vacant or underutilized um, buildings along. So, um, but I'd have, to, in order to speak on it uh, confidently, uh, it might need Christina to come up, but that would be something we can explore and, and, and talk, to, talk to you all about in the future. Well, I'm just, uh, yeah, I yeah. think it would be something to talk about since a lot of those buildings have been vacant for yeah. a very long time. And we have a lot of interest. Um, there is interest in the uh, downtown. We uh, struggled all of last year uh, with about six different uh, entrepreneurs looking for space and for a variety of reasons couldn't find it or locate it. Joanne Snay is a great example, a uh, purple paintbrush. She's just about to open, but she looked... Uh, for a number of months to find something that was suitable and just just had a very difficult time uh, but thankfully she's about to open in, in this downtown but um, and we've also um, you know directed uh, these entrepreneurs to many of the building owners uh, and just it's very difficult to, to do that but if we had a few more spaces uh, the ones that are underutilized that might be something that would really help um, uh, with the uh, with our goals of, of utilizing and having a vibrant downtown Okay. I'm just waiting to see if there are any more comments for Mark. <laughs> Thank you again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Have a good evening. Citizens comment. This is an opportunity for citizens to come. Oh, yeah. This is an opportunity for citizens to comment on municipal services, activities, or areas of the city involvement. Citizens in attendance shall be recognized by the mayor for comments limited to five minutes. Letters submitted to council will not be publicly read. If you have a comment, you may step to the podium, state your name and address. Not seen. All right, moving on to uh, uh, city and staff. Mr. Gamble, I bet you have a lot to report on. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, so last week we started distributing, dis um, giving out filters to qualified residents as part of that lead exceedance. Um, we did have those three high lead levels above that 15 parts per billion out of the 20 homes. So um, we are giving out filters to qualified residents pregnant women in the house, so if the, the home has pregnant women in the house or a child under 18 in the house for a period of time and they can't afford a filter, they are eligible and they can pick that up at the DPW 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. Um, so far we've had 31 residents pick up the faucet mount and 10 pick up the fil uh, pitcher filter. So those are available. Um, of those three homes, we're confident on the city side those four connection points do not have lead there is one that they haven't visually verified and that's at the main so I've asked that they um, inspect that as well so and that would mean that those high lead levels were in the home and it's just important I think part of this is awareness about in the home um, older faucets solder on copper pipes um, before 1988 um, old aerators, just being aware to replace those items. The goal is zero lead, and I think that's the reason for these change in standards with the lead and copper that, the, that Eagle put out. So um, we do have water testing kits available through Trace Analytical. That is at the cost of the resident, though it's $27.50 per test, but those are available at DPW if someone's interested, and that's kind of the way to find out what's going on in your home. And we're asking that residents share that with the city when they, if they do submit um, their water for testing, let us know uh, their results. 
Thank you. Mr. Saylor. Nothing, Your Honor. Thank you. Nothing, Your Honor. Thank you. Sean Milton. Just real quick, Mayor. Um, two major projects are the, the riverbank. You know, we've got two major projects that are coming to conclusion. The riverbank project, uh, we've completed putting in the dune grass, and we've got a little bit of curb and gutter to do at the entrance down into the, uh, the boat launch. So that project is getting very close to completion. It, and then the Jackson, Van Buren, water main and road reconstruction project. Uh, today they just finished up putting in the last couple of driveways. By the end of the week, uh, the residents will be able to use their driveways and that project will be at substantial completion. There'll be some topsoil seeding things to do. So I just want to let you know on those two projects, it's been a long time coming all summer long and they're near completion. Thank you very much. Let's see, who can I call on next? Uh, Chief Glass. I don't have anything on it, thank you. Right. Gotta get everybody on that. Who's <laughs> here? Okay, let's see. Mark Sicola, Mike Sicola, any department, and Zach, you guys want to come up together? Okay. <laughs> well, I've got one for you, and Mike has one for you all as well. Um, I included a memo for you guys. Um, it's just kind of an update from the Planning Commission. I just wanted to make sure you guys knew that it didn't die on the table. We did. I did have the, the Planning Commission look at the RV and boat ordinance and the parking and everything. Uh, the, the Planning Commission ultimately decided that that wasn't something that, that there was real high concern with. Um, what there, what, what's there now is, is already difficult in trying to, to work within those, or outside of those parameters with, based on other communities, I think it was just deemed you know, unnecessary work. So just want to make sure that you guys knew I didn't let that die. So that was a follow-up. Well, thank you. Do you think we need to do anything further with that issue? For that? Oh, that's different. I'll, I'll take a look at it with the planning department. I can let you know. Okay. Okay. Hey, thank you very much. Hi, Mike. Hi, um, haven't been here in a while, guys. Sorry about that. Been uh, busy around the county. Um, so I just wanted to give uh, a real quick, um, I know you guys kind of um, were asking about the RRC program. Um, you guys were actually recertified last year um, in January 31st of 2020. It's good for five years. Um, you're recertified out at, to 2025. There's two different levels within the RRC program. You guys are actually recertified at the higher level. Um, there's an RRC 2.0 um, rolling out quickly with additional requirements. Um, there's two different levels, and I don't know them off the top of my head. The lower one was actually um, requested from rural communities um, because they felt that the requirements of the whole RRC program were too much. Um, but you guys are actually certified at the higher level. We worked with the chamber to identify the priority sites um, in this last time around. Um, it's something that we have to do every year. I anticipate a, um, us working uh, more frequently together as more economic uh, development uh, related activities are within that um, RSC program. And um, really it's about streamlining the process for developers as Mark was saying, um, laying out uh, when they come in for forms, like what guidelines and timelines are gonna be on there. Um, what they can expect when they walk into a community so that they're they're not blindsided by it when a community is coming in to look at uh, um, If they're looking or interested in developing in there what they would like to know is you know Basically that they're not going to be any hiccups with their process and what it and laid out really easily for them um, Mark is well aware of this um, he uh, works really well with them and um, you know, we're looking forward to uh, working together to keep continue to keep you guys certified at the higher level so I, I have a question for you. Yep. Um, Mr. Gabrowski was talking about the old Kennedy School. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you can contact the 
the owner, I mean, the roof is blowing off that. They're just going to let it just keep deteriorating? Yeah, I mean, um, so that's outside of uh, an area that we provide zoning services for, but there was a brownfield agreement um, that was signed initially, and there was some contact with us about uh, re-upping that um, agreement. Um, and I don't think the county brownfield, without serious limitations on and timeline set on when they would do things, was willing to re-enter into that. And when those uh, were brought forth to the developer, they walked away essentially from that conversation um, with at least the brownfield uh, authority at that time for the county. Uh, we cannot um, implement anything on there that would, you know, it does resemble what I would consider a blighted building at this point. Um, but that's something that would have to be taken up with like Manatee Township um, if they wish to enforce it. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. I don't think anybody's left. Nothing for you, Dave? No, ma'am. Okay. I just wanted to ask about the, um, I've had a couple people approaching me about the lead levels and if is it published where the where the areas are that, that that's happening. And I'm like, I know we just took 20 samples, but I didn't know if it was in houses if it was just on streets or exactly how it was all done. I want to inform them with the right information. So could you help me understand that? And Mr. McCullough would probably tell you, but there's 20 sites that the city tested and it's part of the requirement was 20 sites every year. They go out and kind of ask people to do it in a variety of places. They're supposed to, as due diligence, look for different homes where they think it would be a problem and test. Um, the 20 that were found, I think, were spread throughout. The, they were spread throughout the city, so residential homes. Um, now our testing requirements are going to go from 20 a year to to 40 every six months. So we'll be doing that. Um, but as I say, we retested. There were some procedures that our water department found with the three that were high. How they went about taking the test. It's supposed to sit for six hours. And when they did retest, um, they were below those levels, but Eagle said those first levels count. I think a lot of this is after Flint. It's making sure that if there's any you know, possibility of high lead, making sure that notice gets out there. A lot of communities have gone through this, but um, I think it's all to raise awareness about um, lead in the water and the sources of lead in the water. So I get you more specifics um, as well, if, if you'd like. Yeah. When I say water, lead in our water, we're providing, right? It's lead in the pipes. Correct, yeah. To serve at the house, correct? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. And, and are we responsible for everything up to the house? And then the house is, the homeowners are responsible for the, anything that's going on from the house? So I think it's about, it's 18 inches past the meter. So there's some connection points okay. before the meter, after the meter, the lead service line, if there's a lead service line, which we haven't found any of those, some communities have those, but the, there's these lead gooseneck connections that can cause a problem. And anything that's galvanized downstream from, the, from a lead gooseneck, galvanized pipes tend to collect sediments and can collect those, those uh, pieces of lead as well. So if we find it, yeah, if we, the responsibility falls on if you if you think you have a lead gooseneck which is kind of a bulbous well we have a, i think a picture on the website on our city website under lead but it's it's kind of uh the connection looks like a little bulb it's the best way to describe it but if you think you have one please contact the water department we'd like to take a look and uh, if we find those we replace those all right thank you You got nothing? Oh, sure. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Mr. Kowalski. Well, can you tell me what does the city pay for the uh, lights on the telephone? When the street lights are, what do we pay for light? The tariff of the street lights? Um, I would have to look that up. It's been a while since I, I looked at the tariffs, but I could find that out for you. Well, we have a lot of lights out, and I've been going around that night writing them down because we've been calling them in. Uh, Josh, I would like to ask you if your men could ride around and make a list for me, and I will call them in, so, because obviously the people ain't doing them, and there's a lot of lights out. It's really a mess. So I'd like to call them in and get, this, get the city their value for their, for their street lights. I know there's nine of them out on River Street, right. and that, that's a concern, and I think it's a, a 
to me, that's a public safety issue. Yeah. Well, I can go down the streets and show you a second and maple and a whole bunch of them. So we've been calling them in, and, and uh, some of them are blinking, and that's so they're going out. So if the guys could get me a list, I'd, I'd probably call them in. Thank you. Uh, I'm just wondering, is there a last call uh, dates set up for leaf pickup? And if so, if we could uh, put something out. I see they did a good job and they got all the streets cleared up and then we had you no know, snow and now we've got basically yards and the streets are full again. So I'm just wondering when we could publish the next uh, date. Uh, or, if, or if the homeowner is responsible now for gathering them up and putting them in bags, uh, just so that we can let people know. Yeah, I'm talking with, I believe, Jeff last week. They started the bulk leaf pickup, so I wouldn't think it would stop so soon, so I think we're safe for a, a little while. But it would be, you know, again, what happens once this, the heavy snows come in, then it becomes where they're just plowed back into the... Right. Last year we had this mess. So just if we could just let people know that, hey, it, you know, uh, if you get your, your leaves out by this time, we'll take care of it. Uh, kind of thing and then after that you're on your own and you need to be bagging them up and and taking care of them yourself after such a date if that would be helpful because um, I mean some people won't but a lot of people will if they know that nobody's going to come and gather them well we'll post that on the website and on Facebook that's good thank you and then the other one is we talked about a reservation system for parks uh, just curious if if we've gotten anywhere or, Yes, I met with Ed Bradford, and I think we want to look at a similar system to what we do over, um, I believe, by the harbor there. So we want to do something there. Maybe it would be posted uh, maybe th three months at a time at, at the pavilion, at the Lions Pavilion, in a glass case. We were kind of looking at a TV, but I think concern about some vandalism with that. But I think a case that gets updated weekly three months out um, over the summer, I think is what we're looking at doing at this point. So uh, we, will, we will be coming back to council with that recommendation, but in meeting with that, I think that's probably the most practical first step to take. Okay. Thank you. My uh, question for the evening is, are the restrooms, the public restrooms, being locked up at night? What time do they get locked up? They are, they are, they do lock up at night. I think they have the self-locking. I believe it. I think it's probably seven or eight, but I'd have to confirm with Mr. McCoola. Okay, and that's on all parks like Duffy Park and Reese Park? I believe so. Do we have automatic locks there? That's really all I have. I just want to thank everybody for their time and their, their patience tonight. I know I skipped around a little bit, backtrack on the agenda. I apologize for that. Um, do we have a meeting next week? No. Well, we do, don't we? We have a study session, yes. Okay. All right. So I guess we'll see you next week. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Okay.